Hey guys, we're um, going to start on another installation for the uh, charcoal uh, drawings. Uh, this is going to be a long haired cat. Uh, by request, I've uh, cut the music out from the background. Uh, so hopefully, you guys can hear me better. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop stammering and stuttering because I do that an awful lot. Uh, a couple of things we're going to bring up as notes um, when we go over these cats this time is going to be uh, contrast. Uh, hue, tone, depth, highlight, texture, and volume. Um, not so much hue until we get into color, uh, but the uh, rest we should be able to talk, talk about in uh, relative ease. Uh, we have two cats on this page. One is a Persian type and the other one is a uh, Maine Coon. It's a uh, tabby and white Maine Coon, and for the subject of the study, um, we've taken a color picture and we've uh, I've taken it and, and transformed it into black and white to ease the uh, focus on telling you how I'm executing this rather than focusing on actually executing it. Uh, with any picture, when you have a, a focal piece being a face, you want to make sure your eyes are nice and crisp and sharp, and that everything kind of builds up from the center of your piece. So, as we did with the short-haired cats, we're going to start with the pupils. And in doing this study, I am working on a, a HB which is the hardest charcoal pencil you can get without going into uh, carbon pencils. So defining the eye here and the uh, eyelid and the shape of the eye. Like so. I have to adjust this here. So as of right now, all we've done is really just define where the edges of the eye are. In these long-haired cats, it's not unusual to see uh, hair that comes down and drapes in front of the eyelid. So what we're going to do is define what we are going to have for the definite part of the eye that's going to show, and we're not going to take this away. So definitely we want part of the pupil to show. Eyelid. Now I can't really get into my very darkest darks with this HB because it is designed to kind of be a detailing pen. Excuse me, pencil. So we are going to go with a 4B to kind of intensify these colors a little bit. It's not as quite as sharp as I would like it, but I'm only just accenting color. I am not creating new. New material here. Just adding to what I already have. In this case, I'm not really pushing down very hard. Like I said, we're just adding rather than detracting. <clears throat> when you get with the basic um, build, these cats are very similar to, I should say, these Maine Coons. This is not going to be a short-faced cat, so you can continue to build up the uh, muzzle region and the tear duct region with relative confidence. And 
and once again how you push this from being a flat plane to a three-dimensional plane and we're going to push this eyeball back into the head just going to bring some shadow into this in this case we're compensating for the um, cue and the tone of the uh, pink of the eye in this case this cat's got some really bright eyes so we don't really need to get a really big shadow around the edge of the iris uh, where the light seems to be catching it but rather in with the pupil because remember again that your pupil is like a hole in the iris and the iris is a surface within the eye so in this case the Iris is catching some light. But it's not truly white. So for right now, we can leave that there. If you're more comfortable just adding with color, be it um, cross hatching or straight uh, sketching and then blending back on it, feel free which uh, ever technique is most comfortable for you. This cat's eye is going to be a little bit of a challenge because I can't really break my rule that your pupil is a straight line because it is. In this case, let me see if I can't zoom in here a little bit. No, I can't really. In this case, um, this part of the iris here. Let's see if I get a bit of thing. All right, this part of the iris here is actually catching some of the shadow, and then the edge of the iris here is catching the light. So it's acting like a bowl. So you still have this hard to find edge, the edge of the iris, but you somehow have to create a depth of field between the edge of this iris here, where this highlight is, and. <clears throat> the uh, pupil itself. Sometimes that can be as easy as just pulling the uh, tone into the uh, iris Sometimes it may be more complicated than that and require a little bit of fidgeting. In this particular case, it works fairly well to just pull the uh, iris tone into the eye. The slightly harder part is to get the sharp, detailed look that is part of the white pink of the eye. Because this is actually on the when you transfer this into a uh, grayscale image, it becomes very very similar <coughs> to the iris color. So creating that definition is <coughs> is and can be kind of difficult. I am noticing that in this one. 
can actually narrow down. line that creates the edge of the iris and therefore creates the highlight and the contrast. Okay, so looking back at our study subject again, pull this color from the pupil back here and you create the illusion of depth. You haven't really softened the iris as much as you've shaded the area around it. And again, just coming in with the softer charcoal to darken the value around the lid. So on this cat, um, what happens is that right about here you have some fur that is um, could be considered eyelash, could be considered eyebrow, um, depending on uh, your perspective of it. Right here it's very hard to tell. The only thing you can tell for sure is that the shadow here that creates the upper lid is broken. Um, but we don't want it to completely detract from this, uh, that which we've built up as part of the eye. So I'm going to push the, the iris back again. And go back and build up some more. And sometimes that's what it takes. It takes a lot of layering back and forth. Okay, in this particular cat, its tabby markings lend it to having some uh, streaking right here. And keep in mind with the directionality of your fur. So a lot of what's going on around this cat's face is very soft. In your long-haired cats versus your short-haired cats, you can't really define the characteristics until you get farther away from the face. Typically, the area uh, in the muzzle and around the eyes is all relatively the same length between long-haired breeds and short-haired breeds. And here I just have a notation that I have a marking here. So I'm just going in and we're just hash marking this in. Coming back around this way. And right about here, when you get to the end of the tear duct, is where you have a change of a fur pattern. So you're going to wind up with a, a line right about here. In every breed of cat, where the fur that normally goes in this direction turns and goes toward the face, turns and goes down the snout, and turns and goes toward the, uh, toward the eye and actually comes away from the eye at the same point. So you have a conflict in uh, many breeds. I think the only breed you really would not wind up with a conflict there is the uh, hairless sphinx. And even in that breed, depending on how fine the fur is, you still may wind up with that small conflict. switch to a different pencil. 
hard pencils are very good for detail. However, at this point, I want to create some tonal value. If you want the fur to feel very coarse, keep a lot of contrast. If you want it to feel softer, you need less contrast. And so by that, oops, uh, by contrast I mean uh, less light and dark right next to each other. And more of like a gradient value. Just kind of goes softly from light to dark. Going with the true tabby markings, um, this cat has a white spot right here. And we find that we actually have the darkness that appears at the edge of the marking. So if the marking comes to here, you're going to have a change in the pattern of how you're shading it. There's two reasons for this. A, your hairline from here to here gets much longer. It's over doubled your um, tissue underneath here is very hard, and therefore the you know the hairs are shorter. There's not a lot of uh, fleshy surface to move in order to create a bend in the fur. So it's always going to fairly uh, lay fairly the same way. And since this uh, shape here goes in from the eye and out, and then goes back in again to create the bridge of the nose, you're going to have a highlight in the middle of this. But because it's that very soft, short fur, you go with less texture and more shading. Back in with the uh, HB Hard. Again, let's see, a point in the eye, right about here. We have another marking, comes down. Again, that tabby marking. And keep in mind where your um, where your fur is going, because even if you are not intending on having your <coughs> lines show, you're actually planning on showing a gradient value rather than the high contrast of a short fur, uh, you have a tendency of still shading in the direction that you are sketching. So in this case, right here, just come with so many tabbies, you have a white area on a <coughs> hard, fairly hard surface, low flush, low soft tissue. The um, length of the fur is increasing the soft tissue mass is increasing and therefore your contrast is going to increase. This is when I say that when you go through when you look at your cats it's good to put your hands on your subjects and have an idea of uh, how these cats are built um, and when we get into um, oriental type cats um, we'll get into more detail with how 
this is going to help you more accurately and more realistically render your cats. And if you're looking for something uh, more in the wilds, I am also working on a tutorial with uh, cheetahs. It is an acrylic and not in the charcoal or graphite, so uh, it can be a little bit harder to follow. But if you have any questions, just feel free to leave a post as we're going. Leave me a comment, feel free to subscribe. And we can continue to review it and see where we can improve. Everything with this is like a learning process. Alright, so what we're doing now is we've gotten to the point where we've got this part of the bridge of the nose here. This is obviously a highlighted part. Then we're getting into the depth of the face here, where we're getting into a longer uh, depth of fur. You're getting into more soft tissue because once you actually leave the eye socket, you're all into uh, muscle mass and soft tissue here. So, of course, the fur is going to get longer. And uh, depth of the contrast is going to be more. And with doing a lot of contrast is where uh, your eye naturally goes in a picture. So if there's low tonal quality and low contrast, your eye kind of just goes, oh, it's pretty well all the same thing and moving on. And your eye scans for stuff of high contrast that your brain finds more stimulating and more engaging. So now because this tabby is a uh, black and white silver right now, this all registers as different directions and different values as we are doing an awful lot of uh, repeating. Now, in order to bring out some of these markings a little bit better, I'm going to go back in with that 4B Soft ever so slightly. Bring in just a few hairs. And see how that just that little bit brings that one marking out. Now in this case, and as with many cases with tabbies, one of the nice things about doing them in charcoal is that uh, the ticking in their coat, because the uh, fur is tipped in color rather than being a solid color, lends itself to being exceptionally interesting. Here we have a little bit of shadow beneath this eyelid here. And already <clears throat> we're a half hour into this and you can already see the huge pop that this cat's got. And <clears throat> how striking this uh, drawing is by itself. And you can go back and forth uh, with your shades and your highlights. Go back to my hard pencil again. And of course you're very uh, various different ways of doing strokes on the paper and uh, different tools.
tools are all going to play a part into how it comes about. the lower lid just in with the 4B just a bit back in with the HB I did kind of fudge this just a little bit I did put a mark in here that I didn't want. It's not a big one. That's my point to my bob. Just wrap that up a little bit. The other thing I didn't do is something that I mentioned in the first video is I did not bring the eye into the fur. So very softly, but a very soft mark circles, very soft. Let's bring that eye forward. And all we're doing is just softening that line. So already you can see how much that makes a difference. being very careful of where you want to shade, not doing that mistake again, and of where our strokes are going. Okay. I'm going to soften that again, go in, blend the color out, just to soften that a little bit. And with the 4B soft, I'm going to create that mark up on the eye. So now already you've got a really nice set of eye catching contrast. You know right away what, what it is when you see it. by having softened the contrast or softening, softening oh, so apologies, uh, the overall texture uh, of what we're looking at. The hard values here impress you to have quite a coarser fur and it turns out that it actually isn't coarser, it's the fact that within this area here, this fur is ticked and tipped. And by, if you if you aren't familiar with that term, what it is is that the um, base of the hair, where the hair follicle is, is, is white. And then as it grows out, it becomes tipped in black. Depending on how they grow, if it's uh, a random pattern or a static pattern, um, or a predictable pattern, uh, will depend whether or not uh, it becomes an all-over thing, if it creates an actual line in the coat, or um, if it creates a pattern like a, a rosette or a stripe or In this case, it's ticking that when it comes together causes the illusion of stripes. But 
tabbies you often find that the illusion comes from the uh, hair being tipped. It's not that base. Lower contrast, softer fur. Higher contrast, coarser fur. Okay. Again, uh, when you get the higher contrast is also where your eye is naturally going to go. Contrast is generally reserved for non focal areas. Not this cat, you've got a highlight here. We still have that pesky accident sticking around. Oops. All I'm doing there is just scratching it out very slightly with an X-Acto knife. So again here we have the fur that comes down. Because this fur is so soft and in this shot we don't really have a definite point where we can tell that we can tell the directionality that the fur is going. You kind of have to use your uh, own best judgment. Use your own previous experience. As soft as the fur is in other areas, the fur that is actually on the face of this cat is going to be a little bit more coarse. Uh, well, A, because it's shorter, B, because it's on a hard surface, and C, much like the rest of the fur on this cat, it is still ticked, and so even if it is texturally to the touch, not uh, coarser, oops, it will still appear coarser because of the high amount of contrast. And again, to soften that, just go in and smooth out your tones. If you don't like 
like in this particular case, the bridge of this cat's nose here is white, this area here is white, and I know that the highlight plane goes right through um, this uh, area where there is uh, some actual markings on this cat. This can be a little bit of a tricky area because at the same point that you have to create a pattern in the coat, you also have to imply light and shadow. here with yet another marking. And we're going to soften this. Because where I don't want my focus compositionally is uh, on this one spot in the face. I mean it is a character of this cat's face, but it is not the uh, only characteristic. And many of the t techniques and philosophies that I'm using on these domestic cats, you can use on uh, wild cats. You're just talking about uh, a larger and a breed of feline. So the question becomes, at this point, we're going from very short hair to uh, longer hair and longer hair and how longer hair. Is it just strokes that change that take it from the illusion of long to short, or is there something else? And. Sadly, the question is yes, or the answer is yes. Um, it is both strokes themselves that become the characteristics and the nature of the illusion. Whereas here you cannot tell any real definite strokes, and then here you begin to see longer strokes and longer strokes. It gives you a general uh, directionality of the fur and an implication of where uh, the fur may be going or the length of the fur, and your brain translates some of that into texture. Um, it is also how you place your highlights and shadows that help to define the context of your um, techniques. I'm not just putting down, I'm not just doing a, what would be maybe little check marks um, to carry these um, tonalities around. It's actually a, a motion where I'm touching very lightly and then pressing in and then lifting off. 
in a varying um, not only the directionality of it some of these are curved as you can see but I'm also being very almost random I'm not doing a same thing, same stroke right next to each other. Because if you do get in the uh, habit of doing that, your eye will start to see a pattern in what you're doing. And then, sadly, the illusion that you worked really, really hard to create is going to be gone. taboo here of doing both the eyes at once. So we're coming up to the base of the ear here. In the base of this ear, the hair on the ear itself is very fine. And so we don't see a whole lot of contrast here as to what the... as far as defining individual hairs. Don't, there's no real call on ears to really define those individuals at the base of the ear. There is when you get into the, uh, the inner ear and you have hairs that are carried across the ear. But for the ear, the hairs right in this area, at, at the, the very fine hairs, you really are not going to find a very big call to uh, Accentuate individuality with those hairs. Case in point here, I'm noticing in the long term I've got a swooping action that goes this way with my shading. It follows the curvature of, of the build of this ear, but moreover in this area there is not a whole lot of defined uh, hair length growth uh, or directionality, so we're just going to get this a tonal value. up to the ridge of the ear. So 
So you still have the cartilage in the ear. A very fine line of cartilage. It's very flexible. Tendons and such. And this particular cat being a Maine Coon, we're going to have some tipping. So this is the first part where we're going to start going into the difference between very short here, just so right here, again, uh, low contrast to the point where in this shot we have hardly even defined individual hairs. We're going to get into the longer hairs and the long hairs that in this cat build up the tip of the ear. So lots of pressure at your base and left. And if you decide that you want to accent one pinch of hair over another, that's perfectly fine. You want thicker at the base, thinner at the top. Thicker at the base, thinner at the top. And the same would go uh, with shadows also. Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, as I was saying in this one, and I've since had to change the battery pack, and I'm going to sharpen this pencil a little bit, so that's what's going on there. Sorry. Alright. Alright, so now we've got the defining of the edge of this ear. Now the thing with these Maine Coon cats, if you think the tips on those ears are long, the fur back here is pretty long too. So you occasionally have a couple of wispy little hairs that can and will drift off from the back of the ear. And you can choose, or choose not to, accentuate those. Uh, it can tend to detract um, what you're attempting to do. I think for the uh, purpose of this tutorial, we may actually accentuate those. Going down through here with the uh, fold in the ear. We're going to go in and create the cup of the ear. So in here, with the white of the ear, this white area here is the actual edge of the ear. It's a very uh, hard, fleshy part. And Just like that. All right. And then we gotta go back through and we gotta soften it because this is a cat, it's not a rock. And cats are very soft. So if we soften the edge, 
Let me lower the contrast. We soften the ear. Alright. So we'll go in and we'll create some of the hair in the ear. Some of the texture. And again, longer, even strokes. Vary your point of origin. There are thousands and thousands of little hairs here that make up side of this ear and literally millions on this cat so you could be here all day if you chose to draw it um, hair by hair. Not going to quite get that detailed. Kind of breeze through some of the rest of this. Support structure to that ear down here. You have so many different structures on the inside of an ear. It's a shame when I see artists just drawing a general shape and not really taking advantage of all the subtleties that are in in an ear that your eye and your brain pick up. But that can seem to be a little overwhelming when you're to actually executing it. And that's totally okay. Again, not a focal point, so It's not like this is a titanic loss. Okay. So right now the ear, I hate to say this, still looks kind of flat. So how do we turn this flatness into uh, something of some dimension? Well, now we need to add some contrast and some shadow. So in here, we have the first set of shadows. Created by a line of fur. It starts to eat up some of that light. And then we need to depth deepen. This line right here. And why this line right here? Because at this point, this ear starts to turn out and go back into the outer ear. So always, when you're looking at whatever cat you're doing, if it's a long hair, short hair, if it's an Abyssinian, if it's a Persian, um, Sphinx, always look at what your light and what your lines are defining. because it will enrich and enhance your drawing. I mean, all of these little things, individually, they don't mean a whole lot. Collectively, they tell your brain how to interpret what you're putting on the paper. For right now, because we haven't defined this as hair or skin, we're going to keep this nice and swift. So going with the 
inside cup of the ear here. And seeing already how just that little bit of shadow and that little bit of shading helps to push some dimension into that ear. Go with that soft one. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more out of my pencils here. Sharpen that line a little bit. And right there. Soften it back up. I'm softening it, not because I don't want there to be less contrast. I'm softening it because I do not want it to. I know not somebody's eye to interpret that as fur. Because right now it's not. Right now, we're merely creating skin. circles in order to avoid any misconceptions. Go back with the hard. And now I'm going to get a little bit more confident. Always build it up. It's easier to build it up than it is, as you saw earlier, to take it away. here is very fine. So just keeping our blending with the strokes and just softening it. I don't want the fur to come off as coarse. So that's what we're avoiding. So from the inside of the ear we have a line of fur here. comes off as rather dark. Line of fur here. Right now I'm looking at shapes within this cat's face. Okay. Again, well, hair here is very short. So we're going in with a pen. Just soften that up here. getting into the first longer body hairs. <clears throat> so we want to keep the hair impression that it is getting longer because that is important. It is, for lack of a better term, part of the story. However, we don't want it to now appear coarse. So here, where the 
hair is very short. And you learn from experience rather than by eyesight. This fur is not, in fact, coarse, it's very soft. The longer fur visually tells of well it's, well, it's softest. So here we have the ticking, which is very high contrast. It tells its own little story. Kind of in that kind of mood right now. Everything's going to have a story today. Here, in this area of the head, underneath the ear, you're getting into that longer fur. And the ticking on the face, as typical to a tabby marking, turns into the cream of the ruff. And so now, like a symphony, we're going to move, we're going to go into another movement. And whereas here maybe you heard a lot, of, a lot of brass, a lot of drums, I'm going to go into a small concert of strings. Or the tones overlay each other and the subtlety becomes much more. So I'm going to get away from the uh, harder blending stump and stick with this softer sponge tool. Being careful to keep my blending strokes in the direction that the fur is going. Just keep in mind, just like in the first tutorial, that blending stump's still picking up pigment and tone that's already on it. Now we're just softening it and carrying it down. Go in with our hard one. Less contrast. Really just soft accents. Softness really carries up behind this ear. 
In case you were wondering whether or not I was just done with this here, I'm not. Just got to find a way to transition this ear into the rest of the anatomy. We have a couple of moments here where the fur kind of comes up like so. Now in this shot, what we're going to need to do is we decide that we want to keep the back the back fluff, which is those long wispy parts of the ear that come off of here. Then we need to um, define the edge of the ear and then define where we want them to go. And I would honestly recommend sticking to a general shape that you want those hairs to take rather than trying to draw them individually because individually they may drive you just Daddy. You find yourself at your table and you're just making random animal noises. Either you've been hanging out with animals too long, and you're starting to speak their language, or your drawing is starting to drive the cuckoo. In my case, it's a little bit of both. Give, give the uh, hair, if you choose to carry that hair off the back of the ear, a solid base and value. And then go with this one, pull it off. And this is really very fine fur, so you're going to want to make sure you pull it off and kind of general shapes so that you don't lose the overall context of what you're trying to say. And you can do that just like you would with um, when you're pulling color out of an eye or on the side of the iris, just pick it up off the side of the edge and then pull it out. The thing I don't like about um, when artists choose to do that, is that it tends to detract from the overall value of the piece. So we're going here to find this ear. Find the ear, again, pull the color out. And hard. And as you're doing long hair, look for the shape that it makes. And the general directionality of it. It doesn't do anybody any good if you're sitting there making 
straight lines trying to convey that, well, the hair on this cat is straight. We kind of get that the hair is straight, but hair never lays in a straight line, so you don't want to get into the trap of making hair all straight lines because when you looked at the cat it didn't have curly fur. to find a cup below the ear, just the beginning of the uh, tip of the cartilage, the lower part of the ear, and it comes up into a little line here. Again, the finer the detail, the harder the pencil. So this is a fairly fine detail that we're putting in, and I'm going in with anything short of a curving pencil. Adding in tonal value, we're going to go in with a soft one. Soften it. And this hair just kind of comes up and into the ear. Now, right around here in the cup of the ear, we really start to lose the definition on where anything is because of the detail of the shot. Your lower quality, poorly lit shots are going to have way more problems than a well-defined, well-lit shot. Which is one, if you're doing portraits, always want to request that your clients give you well at shots and quite often more is better than less. Well, in this case I'm looking toward this part of the cat this hold in this ear is actually exceptionally soft and it makes dark impression here and this hold here. Okay. Now the only really good part so far to building up all this nonsense behind this cat's ear that I found in this shot. And the only reason I've really gone with it is that it helps to build up the storyline of the longer hair behind which is this area here. So since we're going with tonal value rather than detail, softer. And we're going with the softer tool too. You need to pull a specific area out. Harder tool. 
And you still don't need a lot of pressure, so, I mean, the only difference is whether or not you're going for a real compact space, or if you're going for a more generalized area. I'm looking back and forth between my reference picture and the monitor. Seeing a slight discrepancy here. Bring that back in. So now we've gone from exceptionally short here to normal short, mid-length long, rather long, very, and this is going to get to very, very long. again, really go with more subtle tones and values in order to tell your story. If you don't like it, you can always go through if you're going with a very light tone. Just erase it. You think you've got too many parallel lines? By all means, just take your kneaded eraser and cut across them. And you may be amazed how fast some of them disappear. This in particular cat has a line that comes down here almost absolutely straight. Kind of defines the whole edge of the space. So to keep it soft, we're keeping the shading the inside of the shadow. And then here, kind of crawls out a little bit. So to soften that effect, just bring it in. I'm doing that. Carry it out. Like that. Okay. Blend with the directionality of the fur to keep the consistent, keep the motion, keeps the eye moving in that direction. And then bring it down into taper. Nice soft taper.
those wild little hairs that are over here. Well, we're not drawing in the hairs specifically. When you're looking at this, look at the space between the hairs and the shadows and shapes that the shadows make. If you draw the shadows, the hairs will appear from within. It's kind of like that Field of Dreams thing. If you build it, they will come. If you draw the shadows, the hair will appear. If you draw the hair, though, what will appear is a bunch of raggedy lines that you will hope will look like hair and will really just emphasize where you put your pencil and not look like a whole lot of anything. Again, more shadow. Soften. And we just keep going with this. So, so far we're at like our one hour mark probably going to break this project up into a couple of parts, seeing as how uh, on another part of this page, right over here, I have a Persian. So we're not quite done with doing uh, long hair cats. If you want to uh, be caught up on the latest, you can uh, subscribe to this, or you can like it, leave a comment. There's a certain part that you would like to see me follow up with, with the next cat. This is going to be a Persian. Leave me a note. And again, there is also the, uh, the tutorial with the cheetahs. Where I'm going over color techniques. And if you've got any questions, hey, if you got any questions, uh, just leave me a comment. Feel free to subscribe, like the video. The more feedback I get, the more encouraged I am to make another video. Thanks a lot. Bye.